In these super uncertain times, more and more people are looking for self-reliance. And for many, making between one and $5,000 in extra revenue every month would be a total game changer. So in this week's video, I'm gonna give you the five best side hustles to build in 2021. Welcome back to my startup studio, everyone. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Christian Peverelli, co-director of We Are No Code. So although the name of this video is very clickbaity, I wanted to make sure to let you know that we are not gonna tell you about any of these make money quick online schemes. There are plenty of online gurus who sell those kind of things. If you're interested in that, maybe contact them. And so the big catch here is that each one of these five different additional income streams requires for you to work harder Surprise, surprise. Now, let's jump straight into it. Now, the first side hustle is to buy and sell items. So you buy an item at a specific cost and then you sell it with a markup and you make the difference in profit. Now, a lot of you right now are probably thinking about Amazon or eBay where you can buy and sell things. I wanna get a little bit deeper and not just talk about a specific technology or platform that allows you to make the sales, but more importantly, which kind of niches are starting to become very, very interesting. Now, the classic way would be to buy in large quantities and then to sell retail with a markup, meaning that you're making a certain amount of profit for every single item sold. You could buy things like iPhone protectors, where if you buy them in large quantities, you'd be able to buy them for very cheap and then you maybe sell them for $10. You can get a good margin there, but of course you're gonna have to sell many if you want to make revenue. So I'll stay a little bit away from that, but that's obviously something and the reason why I want to stay away from it is because when you put yourself in a position where you're buying large quantities, if you're not able to sell a good amount of that quantity, you end up having stock which takes up space and is a waste of money. And so the kind of buy and sell that I would recommend people getting into is really in a specific niche that you start developing or that you already have really deep knowledge in. So for example, this is Caleb King. Caleb is a university student who started selling Pokemon cards during the pandemic and basically sold about 40 cards, he was able to generate more than $60,000 in revenue from selling those cards and walked away with a good amount of profit that he's putting towards actually financing his university degree. And when he was interviewed, what he said is that he had a good amount of knowledge and he chose to trade these kind of cards because he really knew what he was talking about. One of his Pikachu cards actually sold for $20,000 alone. So knowing which cards have value, buying them from other people and then selling them for a markup is going to be a really smart approach. Now, again, you really wanna make sure that you understand the niche. And collections like Pokemon cards are often sold by people who don't even have an idea of the value of the cards themselves. And sometimes you'll go to yard sales or open markets and you'll just find massive packs of sort of Pokemon cards and you can just kind of go through them and if you know the cards that have value, you're most likely going to be able to just buy them for cheaper and make a commission on top of that sale. Now, again, the most important thing is to understand the market, because if not, you're at risk of buying something too expensive, then not being able to sell it and make a markup from it. But again, people are trying to get rid of some of this stuff, and a lot of people don't really understand the value. And for all of you who love those pawn shop reality shows, you see that sometimes people completely undervalue what they are trying to sell. Another amazing example of this, I saw it was a gentleman in the south of France that I met who was essentially very knowledgeable around violins and more specifically violin pieces, not just the violin itself, but for example, the bow of the violin. He was finding in secondhand markets, basically, these violins that were worth so much, but that were put for a very cheap cost because they were maybe being sold by the kids of the kids of the owner of these violins or instruments. And so he really niched down in this area and was buying bows for somewhere between one and $5,000 and selling them for a hundred to two hundred thousand dollars. Some of these antiques can be worth way more than they're put at the market on, and people selling them oftentimes don't know. So that number one, buy and sell, I think the key here is to really niche down into a category that you understand, figure out a way to go and buy these things from people who don't necessarily know their value. And then you can sell them on places like eBay, on places like Amazon, to pawn shops, anywhere that you'd like to be able to make that commission. And for those of you who are not just huge stamp collectors or you're not coin collectors or you're none of these kind of collectors, well, you might be willing 
to learn more about a very specific niche, specifically these high margin niches, because you only have to make a couple of sales to really be able to make a nice margin. Side hustle number two, selling online courses. Now, all of you out here right now have a skill that you have learned over time. And that skill, even though it might be something creative, it might not be something that is business related, is a skill that has inherently value and that you've become a professional in that specific skill. Now, you can essentially package that as a video course and you can go online and sell that information to other people. This is Evan. Over the past couple of years, he sold more than $3 million of online courses as simply an online educator. He at first just started with his iPhone and over time bought better material, started even selling programs about how to sell programs. And so many people don't feel qualified to sell these programs online. They're not enough of experts is what they say. The reality is that you are undervaluing that knowledge and that a lot of people who are just one or two or three or five steps behind you are really willing to pay for that knowledge. Now, when it comes to selling your online program or distributing it, there are two paths that you can take. The first path would be to simply go to a platform like Udemy where there is an existing audience and they will help you to promote your program and to get sales from it. That's gonna be really useful because you can focus in on the program and they will help you out on the distribution side. Now, if you're looking at more high ticket courses, so maybe you wanna sell a full on program for a couple thousand dollars, you might wanna sell a course for just $1,000, but you wanna do it directly. You can leverage platforms like Teachable, you can leverage platforms like Kajabi, and there are many other platforms that allow you to upload your content, sell it, the technology is already built behind these platforms to be able to charge people for it. You can charge people a one-time fee. You can charge people a monthly fee. It's really completely up to you. And you really have everything you need within one subscription model. Now in that scenario, you're going to have to promote your own program. So if you feel comfortable with that distribution process, sales process, then you can go directly to the end market. If you would rather benefit from someone else's know-how, or community such as Udemy. You could also go to AppSumo that now started selling courses as well. And that's a perfect place for you to distribute to begin with. So there you go. Whether you're trying to teach people how to make wax candles, or you're trying to teach people how to learn finance, or you're creating custom fishing rods, you'd be really surprised how many courses are being sold in very specific niches. So that's the second side hustle you can start. The third side hustle is part-time work. So there are many different things that you can do here. For example, if you love dogs, for example, you could sign up to WAG or Rover to walk other people's dogs. On average, you can make about $1,000 side income just walking other people's dogs. There are also other ways that you can do it. You can go and sometimes even housekeep for houses. So when people go out of town, they want you to stay in their house and actually take care of your dog. You can be paid even more in that circumstance. But again, you can just use a passion like that, put in the hours and work hourly rates to walk dogs, to sit dogs, to even just go through people's homes and feed the dogs. So if that kind of thing makes sense for you, that's amazing. Now, let's talk about other things that you can do. You could also choose to teach someone English. Christian, I'm not an English teacher. You don't have to be. There are people in China, actually, there's huge demand at the moment, and in other countries in the world, to literally just have an English tutor that you can converse with on an hourly basis. There are platforms like Schooly or Dada or VIP Kids, where you can literally just, with a bachelor's degree, log in, choose a student, someone will find your profile, they will ask you if you can just be their teacher and you can converse with these individuals. So again, with only a bachelor's degree, you can make about $25 per hour working remotely online simply because you know how to speak English and have a bachelor's degree. And again, $25 an hour, that is more than double minimum wage. Another example is just doing Uber or Lyft. If you wanna buy a specific thing, you can literally just drive a couple of hours to be able to afford that thing. So just putting in a couple of hours on the weekends or potentially during the week, you can make about a thousand bucks in additional income every single month. And I know a lot of people kind of judge people for being Uber drivers or Lyft drivers. It's like, come on, you're making money. You're putting in the hours. And if right now you're at a phase where a thousand dollars will make a difference on a monthly basis, then maybe that's a really good option for you. Stop letting other people tell you your self-worth or you know, like if you drive for Uber, you're not good enough, forget about it. Numero cuatro. 
freelancing. That's right. Today, you're probably already doing a job that you could sell those services to another individual and charge them for it. So whether you're just getting one or two recurring clients, that can easily bring in an additional $1,000, $2,000, $5,000 every single month. So you might be a designer, you might be a coder, you might be a consultant, a video editor, a copywriter. There are so many different things that you can do for other people. And actually taking that first step of going out and trying Trying to find a first client is so important for that first step in entrepreneurship. Learning how to sell is one of the most important skills that you can ever learn to start either a hide side hustle or a full-time business. You can charge on an hourly basis. You can charge a one-time fee for a specific project, so on a project basis. And you can do all sorts of different things these days. And to find clients, you can both go on platforms and create a profile on Upwork, for example, on Fiverr, on uh, freelancers.com. Uh, but you can also go out there in the real world yourself and start seeing if other people need your services. This is really a great way to start understanding what it means to build your own business. And so if you feel like what you're currently doing is not what you want to start freelancing in, you can even learn a completely new skill in high demand. You can go online and figure out the high demand skills. So for example, uh, video creation for uh, you know content marketing. This is something in high demand at the moment. And you could learn this skill and essentially start selling it to other people who are a step or two behind you. So again, this is not like passive income. This is about actually making additional money every month. Side hustle number five. I got five on it. Da, 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 da. Oop, sorry. Number five is building a community. When you build a community, there are so many different ways that you can monetize it. And a great example of this is actually Patreon. Patreon is a platform where people can become a patron of someone else. So you have all these content creators, video creators, podcasters, music creators or musical artists, comics, writers, gamers, all sorts of people who are doing a creative art. These are all called creators. And right now we're in the creator economy. Patreon has allowed us to now receive funds on a monthly basis, even if it's just $2 every single month from one patron. And over time, if you're able to build enough patrons, you just have a consistent sort of revenue stream. What are the people paying for? They're paying to support you, and they're also paying because they get access to better content. So for example, if you have a podcast, you might have a version of the podcast where everything is free. And then you ask people and tell them, hey, because I'm not running any ads on my podcast, I would love to have your support. We're also gonna give you exclusive episodes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And suddenly you can start growing out that monthly recurring revenue. And I'll tell you, it's not just for fun. There are currently 187,000 creators on the platform who are, have at least one paying Patreon every single month. And guess what? You don't only have to create your own community to monetize these people. Patreon also has more than 6 million people who are going there to Patreon and to really invest in other people, support other people in their creative endeavors. So you can actually tap into their existing audience. And if you think it's just pennies on the dollars, there are podcasts that are making more than $100,000 every single month in recurring revenue from thousands and thousands of fans who are just donating five, ten dollars, two dollars to their cause every month. And so, for example, you can start building community on any kind of platform, any social media. You can start building out an audience and you can then leverage that audience to start putting offers in front of the audience or finding ways to create and add value so that people are happy to give you money for what you do. Excellent. So those were five side hustles that you can start in 2021. For those of you who are really interested in building out startup ideas that you might have in your mind but have never really been able to take action on because you're non-technical, so you don't know how to code, don't know how to build apps, you don't know how to build a website, we at We Are No Code teach people literally every single day how to build and launch their own software products without writing a single line of code. If you'd like to learn more about that, you can go to wearenocode.com. Again, my name's Christian Peverelli. I'm the co-founder, and we constantly put out videos to add value to early stage or idea stage founders. And if you enjoyed this video, subscribe, like, comment, send it to a friend. I don't know, tell your neighbor about it. Uh, what else could I ask for? I think you got the message. 
Thanks so much for watching and see you in the next one. Take care.